Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make another quilt inspired card using stamps from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com and I will have everything I used linked below in the video description. I'm starting off with a five and a half by five and a half square of heavyweight white cardstock and I'm using this stencil, it's a kite stencil by Judykins, to um, kind of separate my paper. I'm going to tape this down with some masking tape and what I do, because I like to buy the cheap masking tape from the dollar store, what I do is I stick it to my sweater before I stick it down to my paper um, and the lint on your clothing, it will pick it up and it will make your tape from getting too sticky and ripping your paper. Now I am using some little flowers to stamp on the holes that are in the stencil. So basically what I'm doing here is I am trying to stay within that square. So I'm doing kind of like four semicircles with this pattern. And um, I figure if I keep it that way, it's going to give me that quilty look. Now you could break it up other ways. You could have every little hole be a different pattern and a different color. But um, I thought that might get a little confusing. And as we go through these techniques, um, you want to kind of keep it simple because we're going to be adding layers and um, you just basically want to get some color and a little bit of pattern and texture in each of these blocks. So using a post-it note will protect those other cells if you are working with a stencil that's got like narrow margins like I am here. You could try this with whatever pattern stencil you have um, and get some really unique effects. Just make sure if you are getting close to another, um, another stencil hole that you mask it off with some post-it notes so it doesn't uh, get your ink where you don't want it. I recommend you limit your color palette when you're doing a project like this. Um, it's easy to get a little overwhelmed if you have too many colors, but if you stick to like four or five, you shouldn't have too many problems. I'm going with a um, kind of like a minty sea glass color, uh, a cantaloupe orange, a kind of beautiful melon color, a uh, nice pink, like a watermelon pink, and uh, then a nice sunny yellow. So I'm kind of keeping this uh, summery feel uh, of the colors so that um, they'll have a real cheerful, bright and fresh look. I also think that having these colors against the um, the white uh, kind of borders that are left behind by the stencil will be really fresh and cheerful looking. Um, make sure that you use a variety of different shapes and um, stamps to do your stamping so you'll get a bunch of different textures. So the next thing we're going to do is trace all of our little um, cells, which is going to make make it look like kind of little fabric pieces. And I'm just using a gray fine liner for this. Now, I know it looks kind of dark right now, but trust me, it's going to fade and just be almost like a little drop shadow, basically. So um, even though it looks a little, a little dark right now, trust me, it's going to look fine when we're all done our techniques. Now I'm using some Gloss Super Heavy Gel by Liquitex. You could also use any sort of texture paste that's clear, or you could even use use some uh, clear latex caulking from the home improvement store if uh, that's easier for you to obtain. Basically, use what you have or use what you can get easily. And um, I'm just using a palette knife to spread that across my stencil. You could also use an old gift card or um, anything that you could just kind of scrape easily with. Uh, palette knives, knives that are offset like this, palette knives that are offset work really well. Now, it looks milky now because it's wet, but it's going to dry completely clear. So you just got to be patient and give it a couple hours to dry fully. And there you can see you get a nice, shiny, flexible finish. And I I just thought it was kind of something different and fun and even though your fabric usually isn't shiny unless you're using like a polished cotton or a chintz or something I still think it's a, just a fun technique. Now I thought it'd be cute to get like an applique look so I'm using this cat stamp from Catnip Garden and I am stamping this cute little cat in some of the cells. Now um, you want to make sure you look at the registration mark on the bottom of your stamp it will show you where the cat is going to be sitting so as long as you keep that line at the bottom you're not gonna have a crooked cat like I do there but don't worry because I've got a way to fix that so uh, here's a tip a teachable moment clean your stencils from time to time because I didn't realize the last time I used a stencil I was using pigment powder and um, the back of the stencil had some dried pigment powder on it so it got on my um, my white paper and it showed up and also I did have a little bit of a bleed through a bleed underneath from my um, stencil brushes so I'm just using a white acrylic paint pen to sharpen up some of those edges uh, so that's a great way to fix any mistakes. You could also use a white gel pen for that. To get the look of stitching, I am using some little piercing tools and these are by EK Success, but you can also find the single piercing tools from ScorePal and that is the maker of the scoring board
board that I'm using here. Um, I'm doing the single holes between the um, squares and then on the outside, the binding area, I'm using a double piercer for that. However, I will tell you the Scorpel company does not recommend you use the double piercer with their board because you could go off the track and mess things up, but I'm a risk taker and I'm a rebel and I used it at my own caution. So just wanted to warn you on that. Now I'm taking a ball and stylus. You could also use a bead or marble and I'm puffing up the um, sections of my little quilt there just by rubbing it on the back. And you can kind of see where I messed up there. <laughs> the first time I stamped it, I changed my mind and then I didn't get a new piece of paper because I'm too frugal for that. So uh, there you got to see a little bit of behind the scenes there. Uh, now I'm using a paper piercer and I'm just poking holes between each of the squares and also on the edges so that I could put some brads in there because to me they remind me of like sometimes you see quilts quilted and they have buttons where like the sashes meet um, where the sashes cross and I think that's a really pretty and country and hand spun look and I really wanted to get that on my card. We're doing a lot of techniques but it's still a very basic design so anything that's simple that can enhance it without distracting from the techniques that we've done I think is uh, is nice to add. So now I'm using an unmounted stamp from another one of the sets from Rubber Stamp Tapestry and this says Thinking of You and I'm stamping it on a leftover piece of white cardstock from the main panel that I made and then I'm simply going to trim it down so that it's not too big. I just want kind of the most narrow strip I can get without it, the letters looking too crowded and then I am going to cut a slightly larger one out of craft so I can mat it. So there you can see I think that border is a little big so I did end up trimming that down a little more. Then I'm cutting in from the end of the little trimmed strip and then cutting in from each corner and that gives me a perfect notched end. So you don't need to have banner dies for this. You can totally do it by hand. It's also easier than going to your die box, getting the die, putting it through your machine, cranking it through. I mean, it's quicker to do it by hand, so why not? So now I'm just seeing how this is looking on my card. Notice how I'm covering up that crooked cat. Yeah, see, I, you know, a mistake is just an opportunity for embellishment, friends. You know, if you make a mistake on your card, just add a, add a button, add a brad, add a sentiment. It's fine. You know, the Amish say that only God makes perfect things, so they will make a mistake in their quilts. They will sew a mistake in because uh, they believe that God is the only one capable of making perfection. So there you go. Quote the Amish when you make a mistake on your card or whatever else you're crafting because, um, you know, Say it's on purpose. Nobody's going to know. And now I am just uh, mimicking what I did for the uh, white strip on the craft. And I had to go back in there and shear a little more off because it wasn't very even. But I think that looks pretty good. Now, this is a trick when I want to keep some, um, if I'm doing a faux quilt card and I want to keep that puffiness, rather than using foam squares, which um, may actually make it raise up too much, I do hot glue in any of the areas I want to be puffy. And then I go back with hot glue because that can dry. It's not going to hurt anything. Then I go in and do the contact areas, which would be the stitching lines, because really that's what you want to be indented. So I put the glue on that last, carefully line it up on my paper, and then I just press down um, on the stitching to help that glue bond because I want that to indent and I want the um, the first gobs of glue to puff out. And I'm also going to use some hot glue to attach my little sentiment banner. And um, that's really all there is to this card. It was a lot of fun to make. I think the glossy um, the glossy effect on our fabric colored fabric pieces is kind of fun. But if you don't like that, you can definitely use a a gel matte medium so that you don't have a shine but you still have that fun um, satin texture. Uh, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumb up, thumbs up and make sure you check out our sponsor Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them at pegstamps.com and check out the video description for a way to save even more on your next Peg Stamps order. Thanks so much for watching until next time happy crafting!